Welcome to L8 Tutorials. Today we're going through moving objects in L8 Trace and Unlimited and my name is Alex Hughes. So let's jump right in. So we've got a super simple little rig in front of us here. We've got four lights and we've got one single piece of truss. So the first thing that we want to do and we're going to basically replicate a working system here is we want to bring in a piece of truss. So let's, you know, pick another piece of box truss of a different size and just position it somewhere. Right now the uh, the overall height doesn't matter. So let's just position it here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in four lights. So let's go with, uh, let's go with a 301 or something weird. Again, the uh, type of light doesn't matter. And we'll attach it to this little truss. Perfect. We then need to put them into a layer so that we can manipulate them together. So if I click layer and we go layer two and we'll call this trust two. So layer one is my example already. And then we repeat the same process for the 3D object that we want to make together uh, by clicking layer in 3D object, clicking T2. Once we've done that, we now have the option we can see if we click on pause one to control things. So we can manipulate the height and we'll see that everything's set to zero. So let's set the height of this truss to match the front one. And then if we go to objects, it's gonna to save to this location. Then if we bring it down to our low point, like so, let's just make sure it doesn't hit the ground. And instead of going to objects, we click DMX input and we give it a channel of let's say one, we then have DMX control over the objects. So if I turn the light on just in L8 for the moment, and we put it in blue, both of these little layers that we've got set up are currently set to operate, uh, operate off DMX. So if I run a nice little Q stack that I've got here, which just manipulates those channels, we'll see that they all go down over a, a certain time and then go back up. Now obviously we can see that they move quite quickly. So if we wanted a little bit more control, if we went back into layer in L8 and selected our layer, we can see that we can turn on 16-bit control, which means that there is now a second channel so that we get a little bit more control, especially on big movements that we're doing. This will really, this will really benefit what we're doing. So if I run that cue list again from the beginning, we'll see that things are significantly smoother for the one at the front and not so smooth for the one at the back because we don't have it patched uh, to use the second channel. So right now we're seeing it step through the back and run through the front. But if you're having jerkiness like we're experiencing at the back, uh, just patch your fixtures so that it's using two channels rather than one. The other thing we can do is if we go into position two and grab the layer, we can also affect other things such as rotation. So if we go rotation instead of doing a position and then give that a DMX input. So I've assigned that channel three. If I now manipulate channel three, we'll get that, as we see it snap around, we'll get that uh, rotation. So if I trigger Q3, which is a rotation, we'll see that we can also rotate things. Each layer can have four different axes used. So we could do up, down, forwards, backwards, and then rotate. So like full X and Y control is uh, possible. But that, that's the simple process. So we can basically mate objects together using these layers and then we just DMX control them. So if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out to your L8 support people via the Facebook group, the YouTube channel, obviously L8 Tips, please subscribe. Uh, there's also an L8 forum on the website. Uh, and if you've got any further questions, feel free to reach out to an L8 distributor like myself if you're looking to upgrade, because obviously this functionality is only available in Trace and Unlimited. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.